who's painting our faces, tracing the romance in our hands. Well, hello everybody. Heaven's Welcome to my oasis. Blue. Very seldom do I let very many people Shall back here, but I'm glad you're here. Tonight, a brief little uh, conversation about blind dating. That is correct. Three words. Don't do it. You're crazy if you do. I have a couple of friends that set me up on a blind date here a couple of nights ago. About three or four nights ago. <clears throat> Never met the guy. They did. They knew him. Always oh, a wonderful guy. As a matter of fact, he uh, installed their cable at their house. Okay? So, they oh, he's just cute. His name was Darren or something like that. Okay, all right. Well, you know. It's been uh, 10 years since I lost my Scotty, going on 10 years. And it's hard for me to date. Nowadays, dating's a lot different. And it doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, or whatever. Blind dates are very risky. Risque is what we call it. Anywho, so I just want to forewarn you, be careful on a blind date. So I met this guy in town in Houston which is about an hour away. Now, I went down there and got a motel room the night before, well, the, that, that day, and uh, I got an Uber, and the Uber carried me to where we were supposed to meet for this blind date, okay? It's all great, okay? We went to a little steakhouse over there, nice guy, average looking, pretty average plus, you know, for an old goober like me. He was about 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years younger, uh, 15 years younger than me. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Real cute kid, real nice, and real, you know, sweet, great conversation, very educated. Well, I mean, how educated got to be? Puts in cable at people's houses, especially them two idiots that I listened to that set me up. Anyway, needless to say, I'm not talking to them anymore, not for right now. Oh, we'll probably patch things up. It'll all be okay. But I have a dilemma. I've got a dilemma. My friends, I'm coming to you here in the Oasis because I have a dilemma. So here we go. We made small talk. The wine was flowing. You know me and my wine. The wine was flowing. It was great. It was great. A great evening. He was nice. Put his hand on my leg under the table. Oh, we didn't have to wear a mask. You know, they've kind of let this COVID-19 go for a little while. So, you know, we took advantage and... I got up to use the restroom. You know, I had to go powder my nose. I got to look good. You know, I got to look good. Stay looking good. <clears throat> I don't like a shiny nose. You know, I got to... As Lord, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Big as my nose is, you know, if there's something shiny, you won't be able to see your dinner. Anyway, we had great food. And uh, we had cocktails. And I had to go powder my nose. Don't ever leave your glass on the table with a stranger. It's the only thing I can figure. Figure what happened. He must have slipped me a Mickey or something. Because you know what happened next? I can't tell you because I don't remember. I come back from the restroom. The waiter followed me in. But anyway, that's another story. That's another story. Anyway, it was a prominently gay place. Okay, everybody knows, you know, I'm gay. Blah, blah, blah. blah. That, that's none of nobody's business. I had a date. The guy was real sweet, real nice, real young, and slipped me a Mickey. The next thing, I, and you know what? It's amazing of how things go when somebody slips you a mickey. Either that or the wine was really tainted or some bullshit because I went to the restroom, came back, sat down, we make a small talk. I started drinking my drink. He refilled my drink. You know, I had a new, new round, set around another round of drinks. And that's all I remember. I don't remember nothing else. Nothing. I woke up in my motel room, room 138, at the Hampton Inn. We're going to check in at the Hampton Inn. I hope that sticks to your mind the rest of the night. Anyway, I woke up. Nobody around, just me. In the bed. Naked, like I am now. I sleep naked. That doesn't matter. So that's normal. It was about 9 o'clock the next morning, which that's okay, because I had the next day off. Car, My car was out front. How I got there, I have no clue. 
The dilemma is, now everybody knows I have piercings. I have ear piercings. I got a couple of nipple piercings. You know, a couple of chatty Cathy strings. But anyway, that's another story. It's another story. We'll do show and tell later. But look at him. You looking? Are you paying attention? Look at here. I got a tattoo. Now, I'm not a tattoo kind of guy. If I get a tattoo, it's going to be something classy. You know what I mean? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? It's going to be my mama's name. Or it's going to be a tramp stamp. Or it's going to be a lightning bolt on my thigh. But no. No. Look at what happened to me. Look at here. I need some opinions here. Look at here. Juicy pussy. Seriously? Two cherries and juicy pussy. Now, mind you, I can get a little juicy in various places. But juicy pussy? What the hell happened? The only thing I know is Darren, the cable guy. I tell you what, I got back here to the Oasis, back here at Brenham, Texas, in my palace. I called them two bitches up. I told them, I said, let me tell you something. I don't know what the hell you did to me. Well, they were boo-hooing because Darren installed their cable backwards and got them on their credit card, their ATM card, for about two grand. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. Bitch. But I don't know what I'm going to do about this juicy pussy tattoo. I just don't know. <laughs> you know? Any ideas? So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. And have a good night, everybody. I'm going to be sitting here staring at my juicy pussy. Have a good night, everybody. God loves you, and He knows I try. And whatever you do, whatever you do, don't go on a blind date unless it's Helen Keller. Ciao! Peace out, everybody.